Soup's On originated, I, I, I had this idea, you know, with with us parking our, our food trucks and our mobile, our mobile eateries, um, we weren't able to really get out to our, to the, the community. Since we don't really technically serve people here, let's do a drive-through distribution and do something similar, but then also add our own flair to it. Add that uh, fresh meal product and the soup, um, like if you're going, like if they're coming to the food truck, but being able to take that home and enjoying the meal later. Soup Sans, uh, a pretty great example. I mean, that was, you know, direct food distribution is not something that we've regularly done, um, but we've been doing it and it's, it's been an incredible success. It's an impressive thing. Soup Sans is was important for us to do. We've been doing it for probably going on eight months now, and uh, we do it every other Thursday at the food bank, and, and I think it's made a big impact. For, for the people in our community. Um, we, we get multiple families that come out and they obviously need it. People will come through the distribution and drive up, we'll fill their vehicles with um, shelf stable box. We have a big box, 20 pounds or so. We do a ton of vegetables and fruits. Today we're doing potatoes and carrots a box as well, and then they get two soups and one meal per family. It helps a lot because my bills are like extremely high. So when I can get the fresh produce, it, it really helps. It really helps because the produce is expensive in the store right now. The food bank is more than just a soup kitchen. We're, we're pretty close knit, we're a family. And that shows in the food that we put out. When you bring your community in and people get behind you and, and the volunteers, uh, that's what makes a difference and that's what's awesome about Tulsa I think is that it, people are so giving and, and wanting to come out and help and give back. The day center has got multiple uh, areas for people to get assistance but one of the rooms they have there is a, is a children's room with all these toys and, and, and I'm a father of three I try to relate and put myself in those people's shoes. Uh, what if I wasn't around and my wife needed the assistance and I see those kids in there and I relate to my kids. But you know, uh, children, children is one of the big things that uh, really get me going every day. I was shocked to hear that students would go home on Friday afternoon and would not eat the entire weekend. And for me that was, it was just jaw dropping because if you're insecure about not having food available, what can you focus on in school? I would just like to thank the donors that make it uh, a reality for us and make it possible for the food bank to be able to do what we do day in and day out. And then. The volunteers, um, they, they're unbelievable. Without them, we, we couldn't do it. Also, probably the most important is the staff at the food bank. I wanna thank the staff for being, uh, for, for, especially during COVID right now, it's been a tough year for the staff. Um, they've really gone above and beyond, uh, particularly our frontline workers who've had to be at the food bank day in and day out during COVID. For, for the food bank to be there, for 40 years, it, it, I think that that speaks for itself and showing hope that, that we're there. The food bank's there for the community. We're not going anywhere. Uh, and the only reason we're there is because the community has rallied behind us, that everybody cares and people want to be involved in helping in that, ending that, shortening that line and ending hunger. Hunger does not discriminate. It doesn't matter if you're red, yellow, black, and white. It doesn't discriminate. Hunger can hit anybody.